Ah, today, as you can probably guess, our theme is confidence. And I am going to be focusing on Corinthians through the summer, Corinthians and Ephesians as we go through the summer. So just be prepared for that. I'm going to go up here so I can be recorded. I'm driving James crazy as I move around, so I'm going to try to stand still today. So I love to sing. And you probably might have noticed if you've watched services over the last five months that I'm trying to sing the preface in the traditional service. And you have probably noticed I haven't done it perfectly. And I am struggling because I love to sing. Now, when I was a kid, actually, when I was in high school, I decided to join the choir at the little church I was in. And I, I was up there, and I was singing out, and I thought I was doing a great job, and I came out of the service, and my dad said, I heard you this morning. And being me and my relationship with my beloved father, I heard it in a negative way. I heard that he could hear me because I wasn't singing well. I know now that's not what he meant, but as a teenager struggling with confidence, I heard, ooh, you shouldn't sing. So I, when I came here to St. Martin's and, and in the interview process and I learned how important the music was and how beautiful the traditional service is, and I met Tim and Catherine, his wife, and I, I talked with them and I said, do you think I can do this? Do you think I can actually sing the preface? And they said, yes, you can. And I said, are you sure? <laughs> Remember, we had these conversations. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm going to give it a try. And I turned to Catherine and said, will you be my voice instructor? So she and I are meeting weekly for me to gain confidence in singing. When we do something that is scary or hard or risky, it helps to have support. It helps to have the people around us who say, yes, you can do this. As a church, sometimes I think, well, my observation is after five months or so of being with you, that sometimes as a church, this church struggles with confidence. The stories that we tell, or that have been told to me, are of a beautiful history and insecurity. Are we good enough? Are we doing enough? Are we contributing enough? It's, it, it, it has fascinated me because I am amazed at the gifts and resources this church has. I feel so blessed to be here. You are a gift from God for me. Every one of you, this church, this organization, is a gift from God for me in my own personal faith journey. So I ask you to reflect with me today on what it means to be a confident congregation. Now, what's interesting is that Paul's letter, to the, the second letter to the Corinthians, which, by the way, wasn't the second letter. It was probably letter number six or seven or eight. It just got glommed into number two in the Bible. Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians to encourage them to have confidence because he wasn't getting back to Corinth anytime soon. And the funny part is, he needed them to send their contribution to him so he could continue opening churches. 
So this whole little section that I read is actually a plea to give money. It's hidden in there, but it's there. But you see, there's reasons for that because Paul understood that we hold on to our resources when we don't have confidence. We hold on to what we have and we clench tight when we're scared. I, mean, I, the, I, I mean, Kat, how many times have you told me to relax and have confidence so I'd actually have the breath coming out that would not sound bad? I mean, I'm, not, I'm a living example of what it, when I feel like I'm scared, I clench up and I cannot sing. So when I'm doing the, the preface in the traditional service, you may see me standing there and saying, okay, God, I trust you. This will be okay. <laughs> because I know that when I have confidence, my voice will be, I hesitate to say, beautiful. And that's what Paul is talking about here. He says, so we are always confident, even though we, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him, him being God. Paul is reminding the people of faith, those original first Christians in Corinth, that while we wish we were with God because it would be so much easier, we are here. We are here now, and we continue to walk through life, and we walk through life with faith. There are many Martin Lutherisms out there, but this is one that I love. Faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace, so sure and certain that a man could stake his life on it a thousand times. And I think it's safe to say women could too. Faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace. That's what we claim. That's what that water that you dodged or you went for or you wondered where it was, that's what that water that is in the font means. We have confidence in God's grace so that we can take risks to love and serve our neighbor, to be the people that God calls us to be. So I ask you, what's one thing that you have been scared to take a risk with? Just bring it to mind. And then ask yourself and ask God, God, can you give me the confidence to do this thing? Can you be with me if I try it? God, will you help me forgive myself if I make a mistake? Because God, I need you. So this week, this week sometime, I invite you to take a risk, to do something that you have always wanted to do. Maybe it's to sing a song out loud. Who knows? What's God calling you to do to take a risk? You see, when we take risks ourselves, it opens us up to offer other people the space to take risk too. It offers other people the opportunities to discover that failure is an option because we are forgiven and loved people. 
Maybe one of these days you will come and sing the preface with me because it would be okay. Then I wouldn't sing it alone. I would love that. Perhaps as the choir starts again, you will come and join in the choir. Or maybe God is calling you to be a Sunday school teacher and you've been scared to do that. Or a Stephen minister. Or work with our alcoholic families who are coming out of recovery by helping move them into their new apartments where they're taking risks to live without drugs and alcohol. When we do these things, when we take risk, when we claim God's love and God's grace and God's abundance, we share God's joy, God's amazing grace, God's strength that is beyond measure. Paul finishes up this little part of his reading with, it, with his, of his letter with this. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. We are God's new creation. And we are called by God to live into that new creation. The old has passed away. So this week, try something new. Celebrate something. Take a risk. Share God's love. That is the new creation. Amen.